How to show, hide, and modify grids in Chris. Key panel, grid and guides. Find that in settings, dockers, and grid and guides. So go to the grid, and you can just click here, show grid or not. You've also got snap to grid, useful for vector design, so it snaps to the points to those grids. You've also got type, you've got rectangle and isometric. I'm just gonna go through rectangle. And what you can do, you can set the subdivision to one. And you can see here, each cell is 30 and 30 in the X and Y direction. You can turn around and say, click that and set it to 100. So obviously it's longer going downwards. That's 100 there and 30 across. You can just change it. Also, you can click there and you can set that to 60 and then it becomes 200. It keeps it in proportion. Click there and you can set it back to 60. There's also subdivision as well. So if you want, you can subdivide it, so two. However, what it does, each of the cells are still 60. It just means that the black one, the actual main grid, is actually moved, doubled up. So if I went and put three there, it's now three times the size of that. So it's 180 for the black lines. The green lines are still following this 60. So if you go here, so if I go for dashed, you can just about see the style. Personally, I never change it to those. I can barely make the dashes out there or dots. You could do it for this one as well. You can also change the color. So you can decide, you know what? I want red there instead. So click OK. And you can see now red lines. But again, subdivision, if you want, you can put 10 is the max. Certain, there's a lot of limits in this. So you think, oh, I can enter two or three, etc. Sometimes you just can't. It will go to a certain point and it will just suddenly stop. So you can also, let's put it down to 10. And 10 here. And you can see now you've got those at 10 pixels. But you've got 10 of them, so obviously that adds up to 100. The red lines are 100 pixels. The greens are each 10 pixels. Also, what you've got, grid offset. So you can click there, there. Now, you can't enter minus, for some weird reason, you can't offset the other way. However, you can enter, say, 30. And what happens? It will shift 30 in the X direction. Or you can add, but 15. So it will shift in the Y direction by 15. You can just shove it down or up. But unfortunately, you can't enter a negative value. And you can click that and it will stay in proportion again. What you can also do, this, isometric. So you've got the rectangle one, you've got isometric as well. Isometric, I never use personally. However, it is useful for like TD, technical drawing, etc. And it makes it obviously very small at 10, so let's make it 100 so you can see it. So you can see now 100. Now you've only got one line. You haven't got subdivisions in this, which is odd, but however, You've just got that and you go back to lines again and i've got red you can see the red lines there and you can change the angle so you've got the left angle here so you can say make that 30 so you can see that one 30 make it 40 or 50 and you can keep changing those so there is up a limit so if you go to 89 and then try go up if you go past that if i put 92 it will not let you 89 is the limit. So you can set it to say 45 and you've got that. Also you've got the right angle as well and you can go for say 10. So you can see you've got an angle of 10 there or two. Now there's probably a limit as well on that. There's probably, I think it must be, yeah, zero. You can set it zero to 89. You've got exactly the same as before, grid offset, still left over from the rectangle. So you can deselect that if you want but you can also change it. So if you want to, you can just move it so you can see it just moves slightly there. Or 40 or 50, and it will move again. That's isometric and rectangle. Hope you found this tutorial of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Always great to hear. Thank you much.